Google Groups is one of those weird things that sits in the admin panel of Google Workspace and most people just don't touch it because they don't know what it does and they don't know how to get the most out of it. And maybe the last group that was set up was set up by an IT person or a web developer. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to actually use them, what they're for and how to get the most out of it and use one of the best features available in Workspace that you might not know exists yet. Now, whether you're looking to set up a Google Groups email, create a collaborative inbox, or just get your Google Workspace email workflow working better, this is gonna be a complete but simple guide to Google Groups. My name is Pete Moriarty, and I've been helping business owners for over 20 years systemize, organize, and scale their businesses using technology, and specifically around Google Workspace. We're one of the top experts in the world for Workspace. We have customers in 30 countries, and we help businesses get their tech right. So if that's you, if you're a small business owner or you're working in a business and you're responsible for IT, well, my channel is here to help you do just that. Let's jump into Google Groups. Now, the purpose of Groups and its main features are that, well, there's two features. Number one is Groups is used for security. You can use it to lock down permissions like you would in the Microsoft world with an organizational unit is the technical term, but it's effectively, you know, a group of people, right? You can give them access to certain resources. And inside Google Workspace, we can apply a group's security to multiple resources. We could add it to Drive, we can add it to Calendar, and we're gonna cover how we do those things. But Groups also lets you do something else related to email, and that is to receive emails that go to multiple people. Now, the other word for that in technical terms is a distribution list. It is an email address that places a copy of emails in multiple people's inboxes. And then Google went and did a third thing with Groups, and that is that there is this feature called Collaborative Inbox, which turns that distribution group into almost like a shared inbox ticketing system where we can assign emails to people and have them manage them. So Groups now has three purposes inside of Workspace, and they're all pretty darn useful in their own right. Let's go through how to set them up, how to work with them, and where they're useful for your business. So the important thing to know is that we go to the same place to set up groups no matter what we're using it for and no matter what type of group we're creating. Groups are different to organizational units. Google Workspace does have organizational units and that's how we apply different sets of permissions to get different groups of staff. You can apply a group to an organizational unit, but that's one for another video. We go to the group service in directory to create our groups. And anytime we wanna create our first group, we're first gonna click create group, pretty straightforward, right? And we're gonna start adding people into the group after we've set our settings. Now, it's gonna ask us for a group name and a group email address. Whether or not you're letting people outside your business send emails to this email address, you do need to pick a name for the group. You can always change it in the future. You can change the email address or the name and you can even apply aliases to groups as well. So don't worry too much about the name you pick here because you can always change it later. Now, the next, you wanna choose the group type. You've got whether it's an email list, a collaborative inbox or like Q&A forum. These are just related to different types of groups when you access a group via the Google Groups service. It doesn't really matter too much, but I tend to click security group because I like using groups for delegating access to resources and you can still get access to some of the more advanced features no matter what option you choose here. Next up, you're gonna to go to the permissions page. And my recommendation is that you have a close look at each one of these permissions and what they mean. You wanna be careful that things like emailing the members of the group, whether or not that's ticked, will dictate whether or not external people outside your company can send emails to this group email address. Now, if that's something you want because it's sales at your company.com or feedback at your company.com or info at your company.com, you obviously wanna make sure that's ticked so that people can email that and the email address will be valid. Obviously, if you've set up a mailbox with this email address previously, it's not gonna let you reuse that for this kind of group. But if you're setting this up for the first time, it should be pretty straightforward. Now, if you wanna make this an internal only group, you would untick the public box for allowing people to email or get in touch with the owners. Now, my strong recommendation is always to choose that people inside the organization can see the group members. With groups, we typically use them for inviting groups of people to calendar events. And nothing annoys me more than having a calendar event that says, sorry, you can't see the members of who's been invited to this calendar event. So I generally always tick that one that I'm going to allow people inside the business to see who's in the group 
no matter whether or not they're a member of the group, at least they can see who is in there because that tends to be useful. One of the cool features here on the permissions page is the ability to switch on external users outside your organization joining a group. We use this in special cases where maybe I've got a group of contractors who I wanna give access to a resource, but I don't wanna to have to remember what I've shared with a particular contractor. I can share my Google Drive folder of training with our contractors group. I can share a recurring meeting with our contractors group. And if a contractor no longer has a relationship with our business, I don't have to go around to all the places that I've invited them to things inside of Workspace. I can just remove them from the contractors group and they lose access to everything that the contractors group has been added to. Once we've created the group, we wanna start adding all of our members. The role of owner and the role of manager is useful if you want someone else to help administer the group with you, but you're typically just gonna be adding each one of your staff and going from there. There is something a bit weird that happens in the admin panel that people don't appear immediately when you add them. So give it a minute or two, refresh the page, and you'll see all the members there. Now, if this group has an email address that you want multiple people to access, let's talk about how you can use the collaborative inbox inside Google Groups. Now, you can always access a group via the Google Groups service. And remember that I said that the group service is the place that you go to to read all the emails that are being sent to that Google group. You can choose to respond from the group service interface or if you've received a copy in your email, you can choose to reply to that email and the same thing will happen. It'll go back out to the person who sent the original email. Remember to click reply all so everybody gets a copy of the email if you're replying from your inbox. But inside the Google group service is basically like a web interface where you can access each one of the emails in that group via effectively like a forum style interface. And this lets you put in responses. You've got different settings there on how you're notified if you wanna access any of those. But when you do the little magic switch of turning on collaborative inbox, which is in the advanced settings, well, what this does is it gives you the option to assign emails to people. It gives you the option to mark something as read or unread. And it gives you all of these little extra features that turn this into almost like a mini customer service ticketing system. Now, would I recommend this for all businesses? No, once you've got more than a handful of people doing customer service or customer delivery, this is probably gonna to be too basic for your business. And there's plenty of other better options on our channel like Hiver, which is an overlay on top of your Gmail and gives you shared labels that are shared between multiple people. But if you're a small team or you just wanna start with the absolute basics, well, a collaborative inbox like this might be something great for you and your team to use so that you can keep on top of customer emails and know who's responded to what as well as who is assigned to what issue has come in. Using a ticketing system or a customer service system like this is a surefire way to improve your delivery to your customers. It means that nothing ever gets lost. And I really love this for that. Because it's switched on some more inboxy features, you can also do things like create filters and label emails as well, which everybody will see. Now, importantly, this is different to the delegated mailbox method. If you want to have multiple people accessing a Google mailbox and maybe using plugins with that or setting more advanced filters only available inside of Gmail, well, you may consider using a delegated mailbox and I've got other videos on the channel on how to do that. And this is probably a good time to pause and say if all of this is confusing and you want someone to give you some guidance on your specific situation, well, we have a free consultation available for small and medium-sized business owners. Even if you're a solopreneur, we've got free advice to help you out making the right choices for your Workspace account. You can claim that offer by clicking the link down below this video and schedule a time with one of our international team members who can help you with your account. So let's get back to groups and talk about how we can apply these to your business. Now, I already mentioned sharing resources to a group and I really love being able to add a Google Drive folder or a shared drive to a group. And anytime someone new joins the company, I place them in the right groups and they automatically get access to the correct folders that they need to work on for their work files. Secondly, if I add a group to a recurring event in Google Calendar, well, they will automatically receive an invitation to any of those recurring events that they join based on their membership in a group. And I absolutely love these for onboarding new staff. When I add a new staff member, I want them to be able to get started straight away. And I want them to feel confident that they know what has to happen in the business. Now, who's onboarded a staff member before and not added them to the weekly sales meeting? You get there and then you realize, oh, I didn't even let them know that this would happen. 
Well, when you use group-based permissions and you have groups set up for all of your recurring meetings, adding someone to the group means they automatically get invited to all of those standing recurring meetings for your company. And it's one less thing for you to worry about when onboarding a new employee. Of course, this can also be applied to your chat rooms. So when you set up a chat room, if you invite a group, that person's always gonna have the ability to join that based on their group permissions. Setting different levels of access in places like Google Drive is really useful when you have different groups for both internal staff and then external people like maybe contractors or your accountant and advisors. You may choose that some shared drives are available for edit access for everyone on your team, but contractors who are outside your company only have view access or someone who's working on files for you in the business may have the ability to insert a file into a shared drive using the contributor permission but not the ability to move that file or delete that file which is something that unfortunately trips up many business owners if they're just using gmail for sharing and they're not properly locking down access to files so we've covered the basics of groups i've shown you how to set up a group and what the three types of group uses are if you're still confused or you need any help drop a question down below this video and we'll do our best to answer otherwise get in touch with our team we are here to help